Hello everyone. Today I'm going to start out with just a little warm up with pattern blocks. If you have some pattern blocks at home, grab them so we can build together. I'll see you in a second and we'll get started. doesn't actually involve pattern block building, I think it's a worthy thing to do anytime, any day. And it really involves a lot of mathematical seeing skills. So I'm looking at my turtle here and I'm going to recreate the little turtle by putting my pattern blocks on top of the shape here. Now these type of templates can be found online or you can purchase different books that have the templates. Look at this. We, this is a diamond shape, but look how thin it is at the ends and a little wider in the middle. When I'm working with shapes, I like to think of the attributes of the shapes. And here, these diamonds are dark blue. This is a rhombus, and its color is a little bit more like a mint green or something. And then look, I have these little triangles. Do you remember how many sides there are on each triangle? That's right, three sides. Look how fun it is just to fill in the shape of my little turtle. How many triangles are on the top of the turtle's back? You see three, and those three triangles make a little trapezoid. And how many triangles do you see on the bottom of the tur turtle's shell? I don't know whether to call them a tortoise or a turtle. Here we go, three on the top. I've placed two, how many more do I need to fill it in? That's right three more. Can you see again that trapezoid shape? And then the two triangles together make the same shape as this rhombus. So the pattern blocks are just fun. And I hope that after your lesson today, if you have some pattern blocks at home, you'll just get them out and build away. There we go. Isn't that a cute little tor turtle tortoise little friend for us today? I'll just slide uh, our little friend off here and it'll keep us company for the day. All right, let's really get started with our work today. We're going to talk about rounding some more. In our last lesson, we talked about rounding to 10. So you know how to do that already. So let me just start with the number, let's say um, 48. How about you pause the video just for a second and talk to your teacher at home about how we round this number to the nearest 10. Great, did you think about, let's look at the one we're working with and underline it. Now I'm going to show you something today that we didn't talk about the other day, which is we can also draw an arrow towards the number that will help us think about our uh, number that we're rounding. So when I look at my number in the ones column, it's going to affect my number in the tens column. Did you say that we would go up or down? Five or more, right? We've got a number larger than five. So we're going to round up. 48 is close to the number 50. Now look at that when we round. The number that we have in the ones column, if we're rounding to the nearest 10, becomes a zero, whether we're rounding up or down. Let's keep that in mind. But now we're going to go on to rounding into the hundreds, because I know you're ready. You've been working hard and you're ready to work it up to a higher level. You notice that I still have my 48 in here. When we rounded 48 to the nearest 10, we rounded up to 50. But now the number I want us to pay attention to, I want to round to the nearest 100. So I'll underline that one. Do you remember the trick I just showed you? Let's draw an arrow that points to the, the, the lower value column. So we're working in the hundreds for rounding, but we're gonna look to the tens column to give us our information. What do we need to think about? That's right, is this five or greater? Or is it below five? And in this case, in the tens column, we have a number that's below five. So that means we won't change the digit in the hundreds column. It will stay the same, but remember when we're rounding in the hundreds, now we get 
zeros in the tens column and in the ones column. Just made those little bright eyes to help you think about that. Okay, so that's a real good reminder sort of to say out loud to yourself over and over again. Let me just give you one more and then we'll take a look at some number lines. How about, let's just say um, 371. Let's round that to the nearest hundreds. We can underline, <laughs> get my lids all messed up. We can underline the hundreds digit, which happens to be three. Use the little trick of the arrow that points to the value column that's lower than where we're rounding. And now we'll use this one to um, make our decision. Are we rounding up or down? Seven is greater than five, so we're gonna round up. So here we go. Let's show the 400 and we put our zeros in our ones and tens column because we're rounding to the nearest hundred. All right, let's work with some number lines. Let's go back to the number we worked with at the start, 48. I really like working with number lines when it comes to rounding numbers because it really helps us think about our purpose. Our purpose when we are looking to this um, column that comes before the number we're rounding, the digit that we're rounding to, helps us ask whether our number is closer to this number or it's closer to that number. So on my little number line, where would we put the number 48? Remember I talked about when we have a number line, we want to think about what the little hash marks mean. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And that pattern repeats for this side as well. So let's decide where to place 48 on our number line. 41, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 48 goes right here. Now we can visually see, if I ask, is 48 closer to 50 or closer to 40? Boy, that's really obvious, right? So there we go, we've got our 48 rounding to 50. Let's take a look again with the number that we just worked with in the hundreds. So remember the number that we worked with in the hundreds was 200. 48, and so when I take a look at my number line, let's first think about what the hatch marks mean, because oftentimes, even on the same page in your book, the number lines will be representing different values. So if I have 200 here and 250 here, let's think about how many marks there are in between. One, two, three, four, five. So what do we think these marks mean? What are we counting by, for instance? Good job, some of you said you thought we were counting by tens. Let's try it. 210, 220, 230, 240, 250, 260, 270, 280, 290, and 300. Good job. So where, about where on my number line would you put 248? Where would it go? Did you say it would be really close to 250? If this is 240 and this is 250, it's going to go somewhere right around here. Now, I really like this one in regards to helping us think about why it is that when we have a five, a digit five in the tens column, that boosts us up to the next hundred. When we have four below, it helps us drop down to the previous hundred, or helps us stay in the hundred that we're working with. So let's take a look. On my number line, is 248 closer to 200 or closer to 300? It's not over this halfway mark, so it's closer to 200. So when we round 248, we're going to round it to 200. Now, just for the fun of things, let's say that our number was 273. I'll underline the column, the value column that we're working on. I'm gonna round to the nearest hundred, and I'll say, well, hey, let's look next door at the digit in the tens. Or if we wanna look at it on our number line, where do we think that 273 would fall? We've got 250, 260, 270, somewhere right around here, 200, 
273. Now, visually, we can look at the number line and say, is 273 closer to 300 or is it closer to 200? In this case, it's closer to 300. And our method of looking in our tens column and saying, is it five or more, which yes it is, that means next door we have to bump that number up and we'll round 273 to 300. Good job, you're getting the hang of working um, with numbers rounding to the hundreds. Now the one last thing I wanna talk about is why in the world we bother rounding numbers at all? Well, one of the things I like to teach you about is how to um, get numbers to be manageable in a way so that they're easy to work with so you can develop an understanding about accuracy. Let's say you had a whole bunch of marbles and you counted them out and it was exactly, I don't know, um, 387 marbles. Um, and you were going to add those 387 marbles to some other marbles. Maybe you were gonna add them to 426 marbles. Well, if we use our method of rounding, we can say, hey, what if I wanna know about how many marbles I have? Well, I'm going to look at my hundreds, go next door for my information. This one is going to round up or down? That's right, let's round it up to 400. I have about 400 marbles maybe in one jar. In my other jar, I have about 426 marbles. Let's look at that and round that. I'm gonna underline my hundreds column. Look next door, will the two tell me to round up or to stay the same? That's right, we're gonna round down to 400. Oh, look at that. This number rounded up to 400, this number rounded down to 400. Now, is it pretty manageable for you to think about saying 400 marbles plus 400 marbles? How much does that give us? That's right, it gives us 800 marbles. So if we only need to estimate about how many marbles we have, we can easily round both of these numbers and then it's quite manageable to put them together and say, hey, I know I've got about 800 marbles, which if I were gonna round that up to the nearest thousand would be what? <laughs> when we come back tomorrow, we'll check in on that one. I'll see you then, have a great day.